I'm in downtown Grayling. Let's see. Kind of a small town. It's on the way up to the north uh, as you're heading toward Mackinac. And I have been trying to get to this store, but it's been closed the last few times. Rotten Princess Records. East. Rotten Princess Records East. There is a West. Uh, they're open. And just had a great visit in there. Uh, fun little store. They they just expanded uh, to move stuff out. They, so they opened up the second store down in the basement. So the front, so the top floor is a lot uh, more open. Uh, the owner, he is a, a, a musician. So, uh, you know, they have concerts downstairs. Pretty cool. So great, great little place. Been trying to get here and, you know, just in this nice little town. Uh, I, I bought a couple of albums, actually. The two two of his uh, most recent albums I bought, they put out a lot of singles and CDs, but thought, you know what, I'm here, let's support, let's support the band. So take a look, if you're up in Grayling, you're heading up north or whatever, drop on by. This guy's open uh, like six days a week, so come on in. This is sick and room. He just opened this up so he had a spot where they can um, play music. People can come down um, for concerts and they put the more inexpensive records here. Yeah. And CDs. How did you come up with the name Rotten Princess Records? Uh, Dan just started writing it on tapes and CDs he put out in the late 90s. Rotten Princess Records. No kidding. And then when I joined the team in 17, he uh, decided I was Rotten Princess Records East. Uh huh. So we did a bunch of social media in those years where it was just the record label. Yeah. And I just thought it was the easiest. I wanted to differentiate it from my old record store, I needed a new name. Sure. So I asked Dan, can I please call my record store Rotten Princess Records East? Because that's what he'd been calling me jokingly for uh -huh. five years. And he said, yeah, dude, I, I pretty much thought that was going to be the name <laughs> when you told me. So, um, and, and how, how, how long have you been up here in Grayling? Um, like living? Well, the, the store. How long has the uh, store been here? Since uh, July 20th, 2021. Okay. And uh, so we're working on three years. And you have a recording studio in here. Um, or, you know. Or, or you record. Yeah, we record. Um, it's not for hire, really, because nobody wants what we do. But we uh, we do four-track recordings that we like. What do you mean? I just bought two of the albums. You mean no one wants them? No, nobody <laughs> wants us to do production yeah. on their record. Yeah. We're not going to make the commercial success of the year with a bunch of compressed guitars on it and stuff. It's just not what we know how to do or yeah. what we like. And I'm, I know, like, you know, serve your customer or whatever, but I don't run a recording studio. Uh-huh. So yeah. it's just for any of my friends associated with the label or anybody else who wants a weird recording, sure, we'll help you out. But it's not like, a, you know, none of us went to recording school. We all taught ourselves how to use crap when we were kids. And, sure. You know. I do know real producers who have real studios, though, so when we have major projects, sometimes we go see them. Okay. But for the Dude Man Sir record, my friend TJ from the band The Party Members, yeah. his parents have a house they're renovating for a rental. Uh -huh. There was one room in the house that wasn't gutted, and they let us use it. Oh, really? For two nights. That's for two nights. the only room in the house that had power or heat still. Okay. Everything else had been ripped apart, and yeah. it was very cold, and we did it. But then all the extra vocals, mixing was done off site at different people's houses. Yeah. Uh, Jesse and Nikki from Hell Your Highness sang backups on it on two songs. They did that at their house. So there was like four studios involved. Okay. In the end. Now, yeah. Your your group. You you have, you have a couple groups. Yes. Okay. And how long how how long have you had those? I mean, you you've been doing music for a long time. I've been. Right? Doing music actively since I was 16, and I'm 43. Okay. But my current band, Dude Man Sir, I've been in since 2015. And Boy Mouth, we have been together since 2017. Okay. And those are my two major projects. Sometimes I play under the name Sea Rabbit by myself, but I don't take it too serious. Yeah. Maybe in a couple years I've made 
two EPs, I think. Yeah. Okay. One of them was a live show that somebody captured, so I didn't even do anything. But, you know, and just yep. all kinds of stuff. It allows yeah. you to do what you want to do in the record store. We're going to have store. our opening ceremony for the downstairs thing. Uh, all ages punk show on the 16th of March. Okay. At 6 o'clock. A punk show in Grayling. Yep. Oh, we have them all the time. It goes really wow. well. Wow. I, I, I just, I, I would not, I never would have thought that. Yeah, we all, uh, I don't know. Like, uh, our friends tell your highness they're not really punk. They love punk. They're uh -huh. more like indie dream rock, but we sure. all just fit in together, like, perfectly. Okay. But then, like, really close friends of ours, the party members, they live in Interlochen, but they're like, I don't know, um, flat duo jets, kind of punk blues duo kind of thing. Yeah. So awesome. Like, just get the party started. And... Well, see, just nice. that kind of stuff. And... Bringing the heat back into my collection, I found, again, my last week that I was traveling through um, uh, Michigan, and I found some incredible things I've been looking for and so excited about some of this stuff. And one of them I was able to get in from uh, Noble Records. But we're going to start first with this. This this was big, and um, uh, I, sh I should open this up and took it out, but as usual, sure. Didn't get there. This was on a wall. This is on Green Light Records in Kalamazoo. Beautiful. Original. Though there is some wear and tear down here. Sonic Youth Stage Nation used to have this. I did save the vinyl from it. So I do have the original vinyl. And I bought a reissue for the cover. Well... Here was the original. Uh, I was blown away to see this, and I couldn't believe it. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know if that's photography. I could probably do that too and blur people out, I guess. But uh, yeah, there we go. The band, very nice. Um, when this came out, you know, I didn't know a lot about Sonic Youth. I knew the name because of Rolling Stone talked about them a lot. But this album came out and Rolling Stone was ranting and raving and saying, this is the greatest thing in the world. So I went out and I bought it. And I, remember I dropped it on my turntable. And I go, wow, that's, that's noisy. That's, that's some weird stuff happening on there. And it was. I mean, it, it was. But this was their most accessible album that they had done. And, uh, and, and so they, they were changing, they were moving. You know, I think their next one was Goo, which is really my favorite one because it's the high, most accessible of the Sonic Youth. But uh, very, just, just extremely, I mean, very hard album to find. And it costs a pretty penny when you find it. So now I have two sets of original records. <laughs> one of those again. And, you know, yeah, it wasn't cheap. Gave me a discount because I know the people there, but uh, it I just wanted to have it. I, I just one of those things. And when you walk in, you shouldn't go into record stores sometimes because you're going to leave with a lot less money. But uh, it, highly a very important album, uh, noise rock, you could say, alt rock, college rock. Uh, uh, but Sonic Youth was changing when they were doing this, and really so very, very happy to have that. Then I was able to get this. Oh man, you know what? I, I I I did prepare for this as we were going, so you get all this kind of stuff. As you can see, I'm, when I'm recording this, this is my last day here, so I'm doing some stuff to add into future videos. And um, but there's some good stuff. This is high grail. This is like top of my list of what I've been looking for. The rain parade. I have the original vinyl again, but I did not have the original. This is being reissued on Record Store Day, as I, I could wait. But uh, Dave, my fr friend at local uh, bandography, or the vinyl ambassador, and he hasn't been doing videos, uh, he got pissed off about some stuff from some of the people. Uh, but uh, 
there's there's dumb people out there uh he says but uh, so he stopped making some videos. I hope he does again because Dave has incredible collection, incredible what he brings in. But he sent me a picture. goes, this is on the wall at Noble Records. Yeah, the rain parade. And I have been looking for this. And it's, it's, I can find a Discogs. And it goes for an extreme amount of money, way more than it should go for. And um, so I called Dylan because I know he, Dylan does not ship out a lot. That's not what he wants to do. Um, but I've known Dylan ever since he started with YouTube. I've walked, you know, through his journey, been down to meet him. He's been very good. I've bought a lot of Zamrock from him. Uh, and uh, so I appreciate Dylan a lot. Great guy. And he goes, yeah, we'll do that. And, he did. and so I got this, an original. Uh, and just in beautiful condition again. Paisley Underground. This is, this is, this is one of the, the, the cornerstones of Paisley Underground, one of the most important albums of that uh, genre back in the, uh, this, you know, from the 80s. This came out in 1983. Such an important record. And, um, you know, it just can't believe it. The Rain Parade. Last year, my favorite album of the year was The Rain Parade's new one that they put out. Just beautiful music. Incredible. To have this back in, is it, it, it's pure excitement for me. I, I just, I can't believe that I once again have this in my hand. So, uh, yeah, this goes in that grail box that's going with me, that Masonic Youth. Got to make room for them, man, because just so good. Wow, yes. <laughs> the excitement of record collecting when you get something like that that you really, really want. And I can't say I really have, think about grails and stuff. That one, though, even over Sonic Youth, definitely was like a grail to me. Uh, we'll show this one uh, brought back in. And this is from Linda Ronstadt, Casiones de mi Padre, um, Songs of My Father. Uh, look at that, in the shrink, beautiful condition. Am I a huge Tony P? Sorry, you know, I'm not a huge Linda Ronstadt fan. I, you know, I, the greatest hits do me well. And uh, Tony uh, tunes, uh, tunes from the trunk over in Pittsburgh. Um, he would, Linda is like his favorite, and there's the lyrics, uh, very nice, and they're in Spanish, uh, and they're in English on the other side. So, this is not an original, regretfully. Uh, it was a reissue, but here's the thing. This is some of the most beautiful music. Her voice on this is so incredible. Her singing Mexican tunes is, is outstanding. I, it, I'm not a fan of all her albums. This I adore. I, I absolutely think it is gorgeous. Sheer that 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 soprano of hers just is beautiful, perfectly made for these um, songs that her father, who was from Mexico, would sing. And it is just gorgeous. I, uh, uh, man, the best. And so. Really happy to have this thing back. This is an album I can put on, I can listen to, I feel good. Uh, it's just, it's just, it takes me to a different place. And I can practice Spanish at the same time. So bonus, bonus. Um, really great to have that back in. Uh, another reissue, Tom Petty, uh, Don't Let You Know, Let Me Up, had jam in me. I bought this album when it came out. I think probably 89 it came out originally. Uh, it seems to me, otherwise 1990, somewhere right in there, and I don't see the date on it, it doesn't matter really. Um, is A lot of people will say, well, that's not the best Tom Petty album, and well, they're probably right. But I love Jammin' Me. Now, the thing is, Jammin' Me is very dated, you know, <laughs> you know, because he's thinking about Eddie Murphy, you know, about all these 80s uh pop icons that really are no more, uh, per se, uh, but still, what a great, uh, it's just fun Tom Petty, it's, I like this Tom Petty a lot, I really wasn't heavy into Tom Petty, jamming me, grabbed my attention, you know, he had had Free Fall and was out there, um, his solo album, which was really good, and I was getting into Petty now, and buying his 70s stuff, so uh, I thought, you know, let's just get that, bring that back into the collection, and, and I'm very happy I did, fun artwork there, I think, 
took those strips out of their faces. So, yeah, some great stuff to bring back into my collection. Really happy to have. So, uh, perfect. Can't wait to have them once again back in the cabinets. Thanks a lot. Uh, drop by on Sunday.